we're moving to the wealth management uh, segment of our discussion. Uh, ben Bingham is CEO and founder of Three Sisters Sustainable Management. They're focused on 100% impact portfolios across public and private asset classes. Uh, Three Sisters is a registered investment advisor. Um, they focus on sustainable environment, social justice, uh, and diversity, among other issues, through, through a variety of funds uh, over different, different asset classes. Uh, ben, take it away. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Um, so Three Sisters Sustainable Management is unique in that we really set out to be a, a wealth manager with our own proprietary funds. We built them for uh, my friends and family. And, and now we, in the last uh, few years, have been offering these um, strategies to outside investors, to high net worth family offices and foundations, et cetera. So we're in a sort of nodal point right now. And um, my background uh, started out in sustainable agriculture. So a lot of my thinking that also went into my book, Making Money Matter, uh, came out of the agricultural world. So what I really wanted to do was to show investors, uh, my friends and family and, and, and investors in general, that they could do 100% of their investments in a way that connected to their values and not just let the experts make money on some of their uh, investments and give them a, you know, an income or play money that they could do venture and, and philanthropy with. So I, I really like what Bill was just speaking about. I do include uh, public equities in our impact strategy. My first impact fund after I left Citigroup uh, realizing in 2006 that um, this wasn't a world that really was conducive to um, ethical investing when the mortgage uh, the people were being paid for um, false mortgage uh, applications and uh, interest rates were being manipulated. So I started um, my first impact fund in 2007 and um, I am, have not looked back. So, but I do include public equities. And I'm gonna tell two examples from the kind of innovation that we, uh, that we like to do at, at Three Sisters. It's kind of taking the polarities of our time, the problems and the solutions and, and, the, and uh, putting together unusual combinations. So one of them, uh, my first example is, starts with the question, can you do the kind of black box uh, deep and dark Wall Street hedge fund type strategies in an ESG portfolio. And I didn't think so for many years, but fortunately four years ago, I was uh, called by Dan Martell who had his own trading company on Wall Street, Martell Trading. He was a member of the Chicago Board of Trade um, formerly and had sold a options strategy to BNP Paribas. So a guy with decades of, of work he had retired. Uh, he got really angry when the supercomputers outperformed his um, trading, or well, basically stole his um, trades because he couldn't keep up with them, and uh, decided to do some um, nonprofit work for a while. He's a very good person. Was teaching uh, prisoners uh, financial uh, intelligence in in the prison in 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 San Francisco. And then when, when uh, both CalPERS and Goldman Sachs in 2015 announced that they were gonna use ESG strategies on all of their investments, they were gonna use these filters, he called me and he said, I think I can now outperform again um, if I can work with somebody who understands ESG like you do. So he had read my book and he wanted to work with me. And so he came on board, we started long only um, with our clients' money. We didn't want to put too much risk in the portfolio. But um, a year and a half ago, we finally decided, okay, we're going to start doing options in this portfolio to, to create what I call um, the true hedging uh, idea, which really came out of my farming background. A hedge puts, you know, hedging on both sides of a field, it reduces the winds of volatility. 
it creates an ecosystem or a ecosphere around the field that makes it warmer and things grow faster. And so that was the idea we, I, we applied here. And so it's not uh, to create tremendous volatility. It's not one idea that uh, black swan will ruin in the end. It's really opportunistic. So it's an all cap fund. Um, we have a very, you know, very good uh, risk measurements on it. And um, since we changed over to um, interactive brokers so that we could do more sophisticated trading, we're up over 55% in a year and a half. Uh, right this year, we didn't go down uh, tremendously when the market went down and we continue to go up with the market when it goes up. And we have just recently joined the California carbon market. So we're adding that innovation. Um, when you're using options, you have more cash in the portfolio. If it's, uh, if it's only long only, uh, stocks more, are more expensive than options. And so you can take that extra money and put it into other environmental type liquid investments like the California carbon market. So we'll see how that goes. We're just starting, uh, it took a year and a half to, to get um, into that market. And uh, Dan's experience in the commodities trading after his Harvard MBA, and uh, he, he went right into the commodities world and uh, knows it well. So we're pretty excited and we'd love people to um, benefit from the kind of steady performance that he's been able to produce with Alpha. So it's, that's the one story I wanted to tell. It's just a story because it's different from anything else out there as far as I know. And it's very, very scalable. Um, so the other story I wanted to tell is another kind of innovation where you're taking uh, two things that don't normally go together. And in this case, it's the nonprofit with a, with the technology world. So we're partnering, we basically because of the COVID situation, we came up with this idea with three different technology companies that we had worked with and took some of the resources, put them together in a new way and partnered with United Way and MDC, which is a well-known nonprofit in, in the South, in Durham, North Carolina. Um, what we're doing is building a systematic way to track the social determinants of health. Um, that's a buzzword among social workers and, and people that are aware of the problems of the uninsured and underinsured in this country um, who are really clogging up our healthcare systems and making it very difficult for them to be, um, and this is pre-COVID, the, the, making it very difficult for them to be profitable because many of these people come back within 30 days and, and it doesn't, uh, they don't get paid by Medicaid if they're back within 30 days. And so by creating a way of integrating service delivery to these people through technology, we will be able to um, track how we're improving the social determinants of health. We'll be uh, helping people get jobs and housing over time and we'll be doing this, uh, tracking it with artificial intelligence. So this is another innovative uh, private, uh, um, private equity deal. Uh, we expect, uh, even though our partners are nonprofits and we'll be raising some of the capital uh, through, through foundations, um, we are raising uh, the technology side of the capital and we will be going on to scale this company globally and expect to uh, actually sell to a larger entity in a few years very profitably. So I just wanted to outline those two stories out of many. We have a microfinance fund, a short duration fund. We're looking to partner with a, um, a way of managing large amounts of cash um, in community banks. Um, we have a real asset fund and um, a private debt fund as well. So all of these are, have um, a number of really innovative uh, portfolios. We're looking for partners to scale. Uh, the question that was asked to Bill is a question I, I'm, we're also very small. Um, we've been very diversified in a, with a small group of people doing a lot of thinking and work um, to create a model 
And now we have the model, we've proven it over time. Uh, we started in basically most of the investments started between 2007, 2009, and, and now um, we're, you know, we keep adding to the, to the portfolio. So um, we're looking for general partners as well as limited partners um, and co-investors. So we'd love to hear from you. Great, thank, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, I guess for, first question, you know, if I was if I was a client of Three Sisters, um, can you just walk me through the process of how how you would align the portfolio with my with my values? Well, so you know, it's an interesting question because if you're creating a set of of, of portfolios that are shared by your people, pooled funds it's difficult to do something very special for one person. So we do that on the side. They, we, if somebody wants to co-invest more in one investment than another, they can do that. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm a holistic thinker. I, the Three Sisters is, is about resolving polarities and, and, and really uh, doing both and, and and holistic. So all of our funds are very diversified, like a, a farm that doesn't have a monoculture. So they would, you know, you'd have to be a, somebody looking for that diversification, I think would be the best um, person to come our way. Uh, but people with significant capital that want to co-invest alongside um, with special projects, um, like the one I just mentioned, it's called Infinite Workflow. We'd love to have uh, co-investments in that. Right, okay. And, and I, I guess to the extent that you have listed equities, in, in some of these portfolios. Can you walk us through the, the, the ESG process, how you, would, how you would kind of pick one company over another and, and, and sort of rank them in terms of their, um, you know, whether they're good ESG companies or not? Yeah, so I've written a book about this. So I'm not gonna try and tell you the whole story, but every industry has a different relevant um, purpose. And in looking at, if you're trying to create a diversified portfolio, you look at every industry, you want to have every industry covered. And so each industry is covered separately and, and we have different goals for each industry. But um, in a, to put it more uh, succinctly, I'd say we start with what the Swedish uh, group uh, started uh, years ago, the natural step, um, where you avoid extraction, you avoid chemical compounds that don't occur in nature you avoid the degradation of nature. And I added to that the exploitation of people. But our first, our, what is the natural steps? Fourth step is to take care of human needs. And we put that as the first step. So most of our time and energy in terms of the ESG is really common sense thinking about each industry, what really matters, what is material, and, um, and then you know avoiding those other things that I mentioned. Um, so that's kind of how we go about it. And I, I believe um, the matrix is as important as the detailed metrics. And I think people really need to use common sense and, and diversify. Different people are gonna think different things matter more. I'm not really a strong believer that there's one, one way to do this. Great. Well, I, th I think we'll leave it there. Um, thank, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Mm -hmm.